Guys and gals, hey, this is the Honda CT70. Actually, it's a Honda CT70 uh, tribute bike. So this one is the Amigo and Amigo Rocky 125. There's a little bit of differences between the Amigo Rocky and the Ice Bear when you're looking at these one if you're in california you want the amigo because it is california smog legal and it has all the emissions on it and i've taken all those off but it comes with those and it comes with the magic sticker that says california smog legal emission meets emission standards for california all right with all that out of the way there's a couple of cool other features with getting this one and that is that you get a four-speed transmission instead of the uh, with a clutch so you got the magic clutch the other one you got the uh, transmission with a semi-auto clutch where you just shift up just get off the gas either way you like it now let's go over some of the modifications I think they both have different motors as well uh, and but I'm not exactly sure what the difference is well, I'm going to go over some of the mods that I've done to this bike because I've done quite a few and we will start with uh, some of the obvious the tires that's a pretty obvious feature here that I have upgraded and they are much much larger than stock this is about as big as you can go this is the 130 90 10 and they are the Maxxis tires and if you look at the forks up here you'll see that there's just a little bit of room here a little bit of room on that side just barely 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 fits you can't go any larger than that and uh, same with the back, very, very close. Okay, so the tires were done. I actually painted the outside of the wheels just to make these tires look just that much bigger. And uh, the forks, that'll be the next thing to talk about. The forks, I did an upgrade to the forks, but I also painted them with this uh, a harder, it's a bed liner paint. And it doesn't scratch as easily. The fork paint that was on here, you could probably scratch it with your fingernail. So I did that. And then I swapped out the oil, which whatever was in it, there was only two ounces of oil in each fork tube. I put three ounces of 15 weight uh, fork oil in it. I've got a video that uh, you can go check out on how to do that. That's a great improvement to the forks. You just need to make sure you cycle the oil through. Otherwise, it takes a while to cycle through um, when you're just riding it. So, But you can take a look at that video. I did a high fender kit. It's a pretty easy thing. Just put a couple of spacers in here, drilled a couple of new holes. I've got a video on how to do that one as well. And uh, that creates the room for the tire. What else did I do? Well, let's move back. I did a sticker kit, so I wanted the Honda Trail 70 stickers on it. So that's all done. And uh, then moving back, I replaced the chain with a better chain. So I just wanted... Uh, a better chain that's not an o-ring or x-ring chain i didn't want to put in those have a little bit more friction to them so i was like hey you know i can watch out and make sure i lube my chain enough and do that and then i put a 16 tooth uh, counter shaft sprocket on it it has a 32 tooth rear sprocket on it uh, i do have a 17 as well if i really wanted the extra speed but it seems about right Rear shocks, that's a pretty obvious one, so I replaced the rear shocks. They're the same height as the stock, but they're adjustable as far as preload. That's about all the adjustment you can do. It has a air adjustment on the back canister. I'm not even sure it's connected, but it might be. I just don't, I haven't really tested that out yet, but I have that set as soft as possible. Um, it is a progressive spring. You can see the small wind here and a larger wind here. I've never bottomed these out yet, so, um, and I've hit stuff pretty hard. And so I'm just leaving them as soft as possible. What else have I done? Let's see. Well, if we go kind of back up here, I replaced the carburetor. This is a Makuni carburetor, and that made all the difference in the world, guys, from this bike having a lot more power and a lot smoother rev range. That carburetor did the trick. It is fantastic. You can take a look for the video on that one as well. Other than that, I believe we're, that's all the modifications. I left the stock exhaust on it. I think it sounds pretty good and it keeps it kind of quiet. And uh, we should go out and take it for a test drive. We'll go around town, ride around here a little bit, and 
check it out it's a lot of fun it is kind of a joy so my expectations were pretty low when I got this um, but you know I knew I was gonna have to do some mods to make it the way I wanted to if you see these front forks they actually work really well now um, prior to this it was like a big pogo stick and you hit any bumps and you just bounce 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 the front forks would bottom out the rear shocks would bottom out I don't get any of that anymore which is really good uh, the oil tended to help that quite a bit and just had to replace the rear shocks so there's no way to modify that the bike now starts right up runs really good and uh, it's just a lot of fun you can't really take yourself too seriously on this bike we'd have a speed speed test completed on this bike as well so if you want to see how fast it goes you can go look for that one that's when I did the replacement on the carburetor we got 56.7 miles an hour was our top speed and that's really due to the gearing but I'm not going to gear it up I don't want it any faster than that you kind of lose power and you know these things don't have a whole lot of power to start off with so I just kind of I, I don't need to be going that fast and it's not a serious bike it's just have fun and they are a lot of fun most of the riding that's doing all the testing you'll notice I think really rang this thing out I mean it's like you can run these things pretty hard and they seem to work pretty well I, mean, I haven't had any issues with it at all so we're gonna head on downtown and see what that's like um, it's a whole blast anyways I'm gonna catch you guys when we get into the downtown area guys <laughs> we're approaching the downtown area of Livermore California this guy, that's the first time I've taken a ride through here with the camera on, but uh, we got the donut wheel, we've got, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of really great little restaurants in here, and uh, some of the more popular ones are uh, right over here, which I'm kind of forget what it's called, uh, it is called the First Street Alehouse Brewery, that was right there, and there's a little coffee shop on that side, that's Panama Red or something like that. Uh, there's some anyway hey, the cool thing about riding these little things around downtown is you can park anywhere I could park this thing on the sidewalk and people just kind of figure it's on display or something because it's so retro and cool I can park in a little bicycle spot nobody seems to care uh, I asked the police one time with my uh, scooter I'm like where can I park this thing and I was in downtown San Francisco and he goes yeah, park it on the sidewalk <laughs> I'm like right on <laughs> You just again not super serious, right? They are so much fun. What is the riding experience like? It's like riding a mini bike. I don't know. I, it's hard to kind of hard to describe because it is like a little mini bike. Stock, the gearing was so low that first gear was unusable. Right now, the first gear is still pretty low but it's certainly more usable than it was before it had a 13 tooth front sprocket on it and it had little tiny tires so second gear was even kind of low as far as the gearing now with this gearing I think it's just about right it's got a lot of pull so if you really need to get out of somebody's way you can do so it's got plenty of power for that um, and then it cruises at you know a good speed, so at you know 45 miles an hour, you can cruise all day at 45, no problem. Um, you know it's a 125, so you know you're not cruising down the freeway. That's for sure. It'd be one illegal, and it's so small, it'd be kind of crazy. Oh, I'm going by one of the schools. That was a mistake. <laughs> I think I can get out of here by turning right here. And, yes. It's just kind of fun to cruise around town in places I would never go. Just like, oh, I'm going to go 
explore my town a little bit more. I wouldn't really do that in my truck or my car. But here it seems totally cool. Hey, here's a guy on an ATV doing the same thing. <laughs> oh, what fun. And the nice thing about this is, you know, it's got plenty of power for around town and some of those country roads. And it's small enough to park it anywhere, and it's not intimidating at all, so it's just all about fun. You can load this thing up on your trailer hitch carrier. Um, you might even be able to put this in your car if you have like a minivan like the one I'm looking at right there. It'd probably go right in the back. You can put the handlebars a fold down, so it could be just as tall as the headlight there, which is only like three feet tall or something. And I don't even know if it's that. We come with a center stand, which is super convenient. And see, like, I have no problem keeping up with traffic. And it's just been so fun. Especially with this new carburetor that I put on it. It just works so much better. I got so much more power. That was, like, the best upgrade of this motorcycle was putting a better carburetor on it. The carburetors that come on these, they work. They have, they're not really tuned for power. They're kind of tuned a little bit lean. And then the uh, needle jet isn't tuned right for the carburetor. So when you get on the gas, they stutter a little bit. And you can tune that out. I've just kind of worked through that on one of my videos. Um, but it's never perfect. And this is the Makuni carburetor, I think it's a 22 millimeter or something like that. And um, it just works perfectly. It's super smooth throughout the whole rev range. Revs all the way out. And uh, I never have a lack of power. It's just always working perfectly. So I love that. That's like I can say. One thing to always to plan on is a, when you buy one of these, plan on going through every nut and bolt and using blue Loctite because they don't use any kind of Loctite and the fasteners are a little bit cheap so I replaced a bunch of fasteners and then I used Loctite on the ones on all of them just to keep the bike because the bikes you know they buzz a bit and uh, you don't want your bolts falling out um, and then checking all of that <laughs> people check out the bike so much that they just kind of stop in the middle of the road <laughs> And uh, so making sure that you've Loctited everything, check all the bolts. Uh, a lot of people say to make sure that you uh, clean the gas tank out first. I checked the gas tank, it was perfectly clean. There's a fuel filter on it. And I haven't had any issues with mine at all. Uh, it's a 2022. It was, it hadn't been sitting around long. So I mean, it, the manufacture date was just like, a couple of weeks prior to me getting it, so I think that helped. You see just how much this thing revs right out, no problem. Uh, and then, you know, there's a few upgrades you should plan on just because you're only paying, let's see, I think I paid 18, 1865 bucks delivered. And then all the mods that I did to this make it under 2500 bucks total. That's the carburetor, that's the tires, that's uh, painting the wheels, that's uh, doing the forks, the suspension, you know, everything that I've done to this bike, I'm still there in $2,500, bucks, and uh, it's just a total hoot. Um, other things that you might need to plan on, they plan a little bit of time putting it together, you've got a few things to do, so you put the wheels on, you tighten the wheels, because they just put, I think, the rear wheels on it, but none of the stuff's tightened down. It's, it's just being delivered that way. And then you're going to need to change the gearing, at least on the Amigos, because it'll only do about 30, 40 miles an hour when you have it delivered. The speedometer is so far off that there's no reason to even look at it. The speedometer reads, I don't know, 10 to 15 miles an hour off. It's uh, indicating it's got kilometers per hour the big ones and it's got the small numbers for the uh, miles per hour but I mean this thing will show 120 kilometers per hour 
and you know it's probably it, with a stock gearing it's probably doing 40 and I'm uh, 40 miles an hour so like you know it was almost almost half when I first got it now the speedometer runs off the front wheel so the larger the front wheel the closer it's gonna get but it's, it's just not gotten there so um, I just have to ignore it completely. I may put a different speedometer on this. I'm not sure if you can replace the gearing in it. Um, but I've been using a GPS speedometer to know where, how fast I'm going. Because that's the way to go. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the uh, review on this bike and all the videos I've done. This is uh, number nine. And if you haven't seen the other ones, go take a look. And if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button. We're going to do some other reviews and stuff on this bike. Do some road trips and some trail rides. Just to kind of get a better idea of this bike and how much fun it is. Um, but really, that is really, I don't know what really means. But hey, oh look, here we go. We've got the side stand and then we got a little center stand. And the center stand with these big tires just barely works. I mean, it sits still on the tires but it holds it steady so you can't spin the front tire you can't spin the back tire because it's still kind of on the ground but it holds it steady and straight upright anyways guys that is the amigo rocky 125 or the trail 70. anyways peace guys boom